Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Lady Hill. But before that, this video is brought to you by Jonathan and Semper Buffo. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Lady Hill map you can be found at the Farming Simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Lady Hill, a real location in County Atrium, Northern Ireland, just north of Lock. Lock this place. This map is mostly just rural Irish farming with not much in the way of factories or productions, but it does have two large buildable areas to make your own. This map has eight small farms and four small farm areas, which can be bought sold and bought again without the need to sell any placeables. The ownership of the placeables will change accordingly. This map also has a cattle pasture mod that can be used in any field or yard and removed again without disturbing or reshaping land. It holds 200 and is free, which will be good for cattle rotation role play. This map has 158 fields, three cattle pastures, four cattle sheds, a sheep pasture, horse pasture, eight farms, four small farms, two large building areas, 29 different custom built house models, 30 custom built sheds, custom grass, dirt bike racing, free quarry loaded with stones for winter work, temporary cattle pasture mod, field numbers matching farmland numbers, the ability to buy and sell and buy and sell again on your farmlands, NPC characters represented with fictional Northern Irish named characters, and a special thanks to Lancey Boy and Mr. Farcure for helping out. Now, this map does have two required mods. They are the Placeable Vehicle Pack and the British Grain Sheds. In addition to those required mods, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farmer mode, but you do not own any land, nor do you have any starting machinery. Do note that if you are looking to play this system on a lower end system, you're going to have pretty decent frame rates. I was mostly up around 60 FPS, but I did have to have the textures load in several areas because I do believe we have an extensive list of custom buildings. And as such, you're apt to not have the textures pre-cached in. So you're going to have to let those load a little bit. And then you should be pretty good with your frame rates. Let's go ahead and take a look at our PDA. Now, this is a standard size map. In addition, we do have all the standard crops available to us in FS22 on this map. In addition, if you do have the premium expansion enabled, you will have your red beets, carrots, and parsnips. With respect to farmland, we do start out with a fair bit of farmland. We start out with farmland ID 168. That is the main starting farm. In addition to that, we have farmland ID 40, 38, 39, 36, 35, 163, 164, 165, 41, 74, and 73. This main area is going to be a cattle farm, and it does have a sheep pasture as well. So we have three cattle pastures and a sheep pasture here at the main farm. Now the description said there are eight farms plus four small farms. I didn't have any luck finding the small farms earlier, but I do believe I have identified all eight of the main or normal farms. And I did test the ability to sell those and I was able to sell all of those areas without having to sell placeables, which is a nice concept. We have a cow farm at farmland ID 170. That is going to be located right there. We can buy that for $863,000. We have a horse farm at located at farmland ID 167. Our horse pasture. That can be bought for $4,500. We're going to have a cow farm at farmland ID 169. That's going to be viable for $500,000. Then we have a cow pasture at farmland ID 166. Now I believe it's possible farmland ID 177 is one of those small farms that was mentioned earlier. 
we have an arable farm at farmland ID 172, as well as at farmland ID 172, or sorry, 173 and 172, which is located right there. We have a cow farm located at farmland ID 175. It's going to be located over here to the east. That can be bought for $853,000. And we have an arable farm that's going to be located at farmland ID 174. That is located right here for $166,000. Now the description mentioned that the fields matched up the farmland. So let's go ahead and look at that. Here we have all of the farmlands available to us on this map. We can take a look here and see how large the farmlands are. If the farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? I get the sense that this farmland is fairly expensive. Once we start seeing some of the larger farmlands, it does seem to climb in price quite a bit. And we can go now and cross-reference that with our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. Lots of our fields are going to be less than one hectare, but I have seen a few larger than that. We just had one in the past that was seven and a half, I believe. Now this map is making use of the French soil map and the French soil map is also the default soil map for the precision farming mod. So let's go ahead and see how that looks on these fields. Just to the south of the main starting farm, we do have a swath of silty clay and to the east and west of the main starting farm, we're gonna have areas of loamy sand and sandy loam. If we take a look at our crop counter, we do have a custom crop counter on this map. And do note that we don't have growth schedules or harvest schedules for sugar cane or cotton. So if you do play with growth calendar enabled, you're not going to be able to plant or harvest sugar cane or cotton. But if you do turn off the growth calendar, you will be able to put those crops down. With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. We also have the ability to sell all of our eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. With respect to productions, though, the story is a little different because we do not have the ability to sell clothing. In fact, that's the only thing with respect to base game items that we just can't do. We do not have the ability to buy bulk lime, but we do have places to sell lime. And we also have the ability of getting rid of our stones if we play with stones enabled. With respect to the farm production pack, we do not have the ability to sell any of our washed root crops. We also do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items. We do, of course, have the ability to sell our premium expansion production items. And if you are playing with pumps and hoses, you will have the ability of getting rid of your separate manure. And those playing with straw harvest will also have the ability of getting rid of your hay and straw pellets. As far as our starting machinery goes, it's all owned, none of it is leased, and while some things are fairly well maintained, some things do have a fair number of hours on them, which does mean that they're not going to have a whole lot of resale value. With respect to our animal areas, you can see we have three cow pastures and a sheep pasture on the main farm. We do have contracts available on this map, and we do not own production chains at the start. Then lastly, this map does not have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We have the Bure 6105 small tractor. We have the John Deere 7810 medium tractor and the CH7.70 harvester. For our harvester, we have the 28 foot Verifeed header and the N40BX header trailer. In fact, we have two of those header trailers. We have a JCB 541-70 Agri Pro Telehandler. We have a 2017 pickup truck and the half pipe HP20 trailer. We also have the TMR Forage Wagon, the RA142, the Anderson Pro Chop 150 straw blower, 
and the MKS-8 liquid tanker from Lizard. We have the NOAA TTW-140 animal trailer. We have a pallet fork for our front loaders. We have a universal bucket and pallet fork for our telehandler. And what's interesting is we have front loader tools, but I don't see that we have any front loader arms. Hmm. And then with respect to mods and DLCs, this map does not have any. So let's get on with our farm tour. When we load in for the very first time, we do load here at our farmhouse. We have our pickup truck around the side. And then if we go down the lane, we're gonna have one of our cow pastures. We're going to be able to put 200 cows in here. And we have our food trough. We have our milk point right there. Let's make our way back up into the farm. Now this lane is going to make it a little difficult for wide things like a harvester to get through here. So you got to be a little cautious. Got lots of little sheds scattered around here and there. So we have a slurry point. We have our food trough. We have our animal trailer. Then we're gonna be able to put another 200 cows in here. We do have some bales, so we have some hay bales here, and we have some silage bales scattered around the other side of the farmyard. We have our telehandler, some of our beating and straw blowing stuff, our harvester. We have our farm silo. Dump and fill point. We have a three sided silage bunker. Another 200 cows here. With our milk and food trough. Here you can see those silage bales that we start out with. Then we have another cow pasture here. Sorry, sheep pasture. 200 sheep. Then we have our wool point, our food, and water this time for our sheep. And that is the main starting farm. Now I have gone and purchased some land but i do want to show you here the farm so we have another three-sided bunker there now with respect to the farm being customizable well as we have a normal trend with our british and irish style maps most of this farm is not changeable we can sell the silage bunkers uh we can sell the pastures and the triggers go away but as far as these buildings go, they are permanent to the map. You're not going to be able to customize really anything on any of the farms available on this map. So let's go ahead and take a look at our lands. And what I've done is I've purchased the farm lands that we identified earlier as having various farms on them. And I've purchased a few others that I think may qualify for those small farms that was mentioned in the description. So what, what I wanna do here is make my way west to the next cow farm. It's gonna be located right here.
We have our cow delivery point. 200 cows for here. We have our slurry. We have our milk. We have a three-sided silage bunker. And then we have our food trough around the front here. And of course our straw trigger inside. This is going to be where our manure can pile up. And that's pretty much how this farm has been set up. Let's make our way to the south. And this next area is what I'm going to consider to be one of the smaller farms. It's going to be a kind of a deco farmhouse and then a couple sheds, kind of run down sheds here for this farm. Let's make our way up the street a little bit. And then here we have the horse pasture. Five horses in here. With a food trough. There we go. Diagonal from that farm. We have yet another farm here. Now, most of these farms don't have usable farm houses. So when we get back to this area, we're going to have our farm silo. With a dump and fill trigger here. Interesting design. You're going to have to back into that to both unload and fill. Eighty cows in this one. So we have our milk trigger around the back. We have a silage bunker. We have our slurry point. We have our food trough. And then we have another animal pasture. It's another cow pasture for 200 cows again. And we have our food trough and a milk trigger. Here we have a small arable farm. So we have our farm silo, dump and fill point. We have storage buildings for machinery and the like. And we can always put our own horse sleep trigger down at these areas. Making our way all the way over here to the southern extreme of the map. We have another arable farm location. We have some of our buildings. And then we have our farm silo. Their dump and fill point. Let's continue to make our way around the southern edge of the map here. We're going to skip the animal areas, but we have our BGA. We can see from the land, we've got some nice rolling hills here. Fairly gentle. Shouldn't be too terribly difficult with respect to your machinery. We're going to call this another small farm. You can see our starting farm off in the distance there. Actually, let's check the map because this is says it's the vehicle shop.
So is this going to be our dealer trigger? It is indeed. And then our shop is inside there. Okay. We'll come back to that area. Coming over here to the west. Got a few small farms over here. So here we have one. We have a milk point. We have a slurry point. We have our food trough right next to our slurry. We have a three-sided bunker there. We have some areas to put additional bunkers down or additional storage and such and then our feed trigger our animal trigger is way over here for another 200 cows diagonal across the street we have another small farm this one with a silo Here we have the quarry that was mentioned. And there's supposed to be rocks in here. Yep, there's rocks all over. So if you're looking for something to do, well, you don't have anything better to do, well, there you go. Here we have another small farm. Right here by Field 68. There's no real silo triggers or anything there. It's just some sheds. And then we'll loop ourselves back over to our starting farm. Now, with respect to our scoring metrics, we're going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such because we do have three productions built into the map. We have a BGA, a dairy, and a sawmill. So a full point there. We also have some placeable sites where we can place additional things down, should we so wish. With respect to the ability to sell all rebasing crops, animal outputs, and productions. Well, here we're going to falter a little bit because we just, for whatever reason, do not have the ability to sell our cloves. While we don't necessarily have a tailor, uh, it is something that I would like to have seen added. Let's go ahead and kind of go counterclockwise this time around the map. So back up where we came. This could have also be a small farm because it has that one machine shed. Here we have a cell point. This is going to be identified as Levin's transport cell point. With respect to the farms being customizable, well, sadly, they're really not customizable and probably not customizable by design. So if that really doesn't bother you, then you don't have to really worry about the fact that it's not going to score very well. But if you do want to customize things, then it's going to be a very important thing to know about. So we're going to give the map one quarter of a point. Here we have the horse riding and club cell point. Let's make our way over here to the mouth of the quarry. Buildings where probably are using the new texturing technique. I feel like we have a mix of buildings that are and are not. So as such, I feel like we're going to basically give the map a half a point with respect to that. So here we have our quarry and at the top of the quarry we do have our stone crusher 
Then we have our sawmill. So we have our wood chip spawn point. We have our dump point for our wood. We have a wood cell trigger there. And then we have our interactive icon. And oddly, our pallet spawn point here. We have all these stones and we can buy this area for a whopping zero dollars and once you do that then you're going to be able to come by and collect all of these stones and do whatever you want with them we also have an off-road course here for atvs or whatever This will be interesting with respect to the motorbikes that are coming in FS25, right? I want to apologize. I've got a little bit of congestion in my throat and everything, so I'm trying to clear my throat and not sound too too nasty or too messed up but uh, there is potential that some of that is working its way through into the audio of the video so here we have another small farm we've already identified that we've identified this farm earlier let's loop back over here to kind of the center of the map just south of field 73 And this was where our vehicle shop was. So let's go ahead and pick up a Mahindra and see where our vehicle spawn. So they spawn over here to the side of the workshop building and then pretty narrow lane to get out of the workshop or in the uh, shop so just be a little cautious there something I want to check is with respect to collisions on these hedges There are no collisions on the hedges. Back to our BGA, we have our digester. We have our dump point for a slurry, our interactive icon, and our digestate spawn point. We have our animal dealer right here. I would like to see something other than petrified cows, though, but that's okay. At least they're not right up against the, uh, the fence where you're trying to buy things. And we're almost done taking a look at the points of interest. Just need to make our way over here a little bit. So we have the horses and then we have a cell point right next to that. That's gonna be the McKinney distribution cell point. And then our dairy is going to be down here to the south.
And that should pretty much cover all of the main points of interest here on the map. And the map boundary was a little weird over there. But at any rate, we have our interactive icon, we have our dump point, and then we have our pallet spawn point. Now, in the description, it mentioned that if we go to our animals, we're going to have a free place temporary pasture that's going to hold 200 animals. And it's basically just the trigger areas. And then it's going to be a bit of a nav mesh. But this will not necessarily conform to the land shape. So you may want to try to place this on fairly flat land because it's just been turned off so that it just lays there. Um, but it could go and kind of eat into the ground. So we have our horse pasture. We have another free place sheep pasture. As far as our ground textures go, we have a fair bit of ground textures available to us. Fairly standard plants and trees. And then we do have some modded buildings that are part of the required mods that are required for this map. A couple silos and our bunker here as well. So that's going to give this map an ultimate score. So we talk about... Um, Player and trigger interactive areas. I don't think we talked about that either. Player and trigger interactive areas clearly marked. We're going to give the map a full point there. So that's going to give the map a score of, well, three and three quarters. Or three and a half, sorry. Three and a half. Because we got a full point with respect to production. Uh, we got a full point with respect to triggers. We had a half point on buildings and new texturing techniques. We had a quarter of a point on the farms customization and three quarters of a point on the production, everything built in because we couldn't sell clothing. So yeah, that's gonna wrap this up with a score of three and a half out of five. Now I'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to this particular map and with respect to other maps that we have seen as of late. With Farm Server 25 just around the corner, how many more maps do you think we're going to see come out? Because it is getting right down here to the wire, and honestly, I'm a little shocked to see how many are being submitted still to this day. And until next time, happy farming.